Hello, I'm Benjamin Fry, and today we'll be talking about the why the body can't just get over it. So one of the jokes about therapy is that people always want to talk about your past. And it's one of the complaints about people that go to therapy is people say, why can't you just move on? Why can't you leave it behind? Why can't you just get over it? And it's a wonderful idea. Wouldn't it be great? In many ways, that's why people go and talk to someone or try to have mental health treatment is because they are stuck in the past and they do want to get over it and they do want to move forward and they want their life to be about their future, not about their past. But unfortunately, as we all know, it's not quite that simple. So it does raise the question of why. Why are we, as a society and as a species, find it so difficult to move on from the past, let it go, and move forward into the future we want that might be different? There's a very simple reason for this, and there's a very clear reason when you look at the architecture of the nervous system, uh, which you can validate by looking at the behavior of mammals. And it goes like this. There's at least three stages of response that we all have to any kind of threat in our environment. And being a mammal, one of the things we're best at is dealing with threat, because threat is about survival and evolution is about survival. So we better be good at it or we wouldn't be here at all. So what we do when we deal with a threat is we tend to at first become slightly vigilant towards the threat. And then if the threat is really real and pressing, we will run for our life or maybe fight for our life. And then if the threat is completely overwhelming, like for example, a gazelle being caught by a lion, we will freeze. And this is very clearly seen over hundreds of millions of years in the fossil structure of nervous systems and in the behavior of mammals we see around us today. And we are one of those mammals, so we are the same. There is no difference between us and a gazelle being chased by a lion on the savanna. There's nothing wrong with any of this. And if a gazelle gets to that final stage of being caught by a lion and then somehow the lion is disturbed and they survive, they'll come out of the frozen stage. They'll go back into the fight flight stage and leap up and start kicking and fighting and running away. And you can see a video of that on the resources page of theinvisiblelion.com. And then after that, they'll calm down. They'll go back to the waterhole and then drink and they munch and they hang out with their tribe again and everything is fine and it's as if it's never happened. The problem with humans is that we become uh, more complicated than your average mammal. And the primary complication of a human being is that we think and part of the way we understand the process of thinking is that we've developed something called self-awareness. So when a gazelle is being chased by a lion and then recovering from being chased by a lion it's not wondering about itself, it's not looking at itself, it's not saying, how come I'm shaking and kicking and running even though a lion isn't chasing me anymore? The gazelle just comes out of its frozen state, does what the body needs to do to recover. This then flushes all of its reactions to the threat through its nervous system and it goes back to where it was before, something doctors often call homeostasis, which means coming back to the same place, the same place the body was in before it was chased. And the problem with being human is that we get stuck in that middle stage if we've become overwhelmed by a threat. So the overwhelm causes us to freeze all of our active responses, all the punches we might throw and all the legs that we might kick in order to run away become frozen. And then when we survive the threat, we don't come out of that place. And it may be not even as literal as that. It may be that we were six months old and we were crying and nobody came and after five minutes we became overwhelmed and kind of shut down. But we need to come out of that place and recover and cry again and be unoverwhelmed and return to homeostasis. So the problem with being human is that this arc of becoming activated and then freezing and then discharging the activated feelings and thoughts and physiology doesn't complete. So we end up with something that I would call an incomplete response to an earlier threat. And this means that the body is carrying around that response to threat forever, effectively. And it's like we're creating a whole basement of kegs of gunpowder in ourselves that are waiting to be set off, waiting to complete 
waiting to finish. And the problem with life is we tend to find that people are wandering around with lit matches all over the place. They wander into our basement and kegs of gunpowder start exploding left, right and centre. And we don't understand what's going on. We think this is uh, some kind of reaction to the present day. We think the match much, must have been much bigger than the match because the explosion is so large. And life becomes very confusing. And the other problem with this is that unfortunately, we don't just explode a keg of gunpowder and then we're done with it. We don't complete our finish uh, or finish our responses to unfinished threats. We actually just recycle them. So we get excited about having the reaction all over again, but then another part of us, our human thinking brain, our self-awareness, the thing that's different to a gazelle, says to us that this is not okay, this is not right. If we're standing at the bus stop and we start to get anxious or we start to feel like we want to run, we tell ourselves we're going crazy. This is the invisible lion. We don't want to be that crazy person. And so we shut it all down. So in fact, what ends up happening is there's a kind of zigzagging of trying to discharge the threat, but also suppressing it at the same time. And from two different parts of our brain, we trap ourselves and we just go back to square one by the end of it, having had a very uncomfortable experience. So the reason why people are always talking about their past in therapy is because their bodies are stuck trying to finish the unfinished reactions to events in their past. It's not actually got anything to do with the past. It's about what's happening right now in my body in this chair. How many unfinished experiences am I trying to finish right now in my body? How many unfinished experiences am I carrying right now in my body? And what can I do about it? So the irony is that it's got nothing to do with your past. It's nothing to do with talking about your past. It's actually about talking about your present in a way that can allow your present to be free of the baggage of your past. And that's what body psychologies are all about. Body psychologies are effectively uh, talk therapies which allow you to focus on getting the body to process safely and complete its reactions to unfinished business in the past. And this is the new wave of neurobiologically informed healthcare or nervous system informed therapies, which is really helping to change the way people think about and look at what has been considered to be mental health symptoms up to now. So the question is, shouldn't be, why can't you just get over it? The question is, how can I support you and help you and nurture you and inform you to get on with getting over it in terms of letting go of the past through your body, not through a conscious will of, oh, I just want to forget about it. So body psychologies include things like somatic experiencing, sensory motor psychotherapy, EMDR, there are many other things that influence positively towards it. Uh, yoga, Tai Chi, meditation, these kind of things that all help us to get back in our body. If we can both get back in our body and give ourselves permission to do what the body wants to do and sometimes get some help being guided out of it, then the body will organically recover in the way that a gazelle does and has been doing for hundreds of millions of years. So that's the good news. The good news is that the body knows what to do. Uh, the only difficult thing actually is educating your brain to get out of your way. And actually that's why I wrote the book, The Invisible Lion, is because if you read the book, understand it, believe in it, then it can reprogram your prefrontal cortex to allow your body to do the things that a gazelle's body would do. And that will organically help you to heal and to recover. This was Benjamin Fry talking about excerpts from my recent book, The Invisible Lion. I hope this was helpful. If you want to find out more information, please have a look at theinvisiblelion.com. You can see more about the book and the resources that help you to use it.